we need plenty of setting spray today because there is so much drama going on so let's jump straight into this video first of all i'm gonna say i don't consider this topic to be like tea or drama or gossip this is something i would consider to be a potential crime James Charles has once again been accused of sexting an underage minor. This isn't the first time that we've heard allegations like this about James Charles. James has been accused within the space of the last year. He has been accused of this. Not once, not twice, but three times. Can we keep giving James Charles the benefit of the doubt in this situation? I'm really not sure, you know. I have got notes here, I've got clips, I've got audio. Honestly, there's quite a lot to get into, so I think we should just get straight into it. You've probably already seen by now some of what's going on, some of what's been said, but other people are also coming out on social media calling James Charles out for this behaviour, such as Trisha Paytas, Ethan Klein from the H3 podcast. It is very messy, but also I feel like there are a lot of important things within this that we need to talk about. Really, as I said, James Charles, this isn't the first time that this has come up about him either, so do bear that in mind. But also, before I start, I'm going to say, do bear in mind that anyone can make a TikTok about anything. So I'm not saying that James Charles is absolutely guilty of what he's been accused of, but I'm saying it looks very, very, very suspicious considering his past with all the accusations from 2019 and also considering that he's been accused of the exact same thing before with exact same looking guys. You know, they've all got the same kind of hairstyle and everything. It seems like he has a type. What confuses me about this is James Charles has gone on Logan Paul's podcast before and he said, oh, you know, I really want an older man, someone around like 35, 40 odd. But yet here he is allegedly chasing after young TikTok guys. To protect the identity of the young guy who came forward yesterday, I'm not going to show his face in the video clips. The TikToks that he uploaded to Twitter all got wiped from the internet last night. They all got deleted. People were speculating that that was James Charles covering his tracks. Honestly, I don't know, but I grabbed the TikToks before they were deleted. So what I'm going to do is play you the audio from them, just because I don't think it's fair to really reveal the guy's face, given that he is a minor. So I'm going to play those for you now. Okay, so trigger warning. I will be talking about grooming and James Charles. So if you get triggered by any of those, keep scrolling. But if not, watch this video, please. So last Wednesday on the 17th, uh, James Charles snapped me on Snapchat. He added me back because I had snapped him a while ago, just like a fan to influencer conversation. I was excited because he's my biggest influence, influencer-wise, and he I've always looked up to him, so I was excited to get his message back. I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to post proof of it right now. This is the notification that I got when he Snapchatted me first. And just for further proof, he deleted the chat. I don't know what he deleted, but that's me opening his Snapchat. I went into the bathroom, and I guess he saw the bathroom light, so he started making the conversation very sexual, and it made me really uncomfortable. And I'll post some of the stuff that he sent me now. You can't see it because it's blurry, because I took it on my iPad, because I don't want him to see that I screenshotted it, but I'll post it right now. He proceeded to send me explicit pictures of his body. More in part two. So this is part two of the James Charles story. So after sending me that first picture of his body, um, explicitly, he sent me multiple after that, and I'll post them now. I was getting really uncomfortable, so I told him my age. I told him I'm 16. Meanwhile, he's 21. He's a grown man. And then he proceeds to say, oh, but I didn't even get to see the, yeah, meaning my body. And after telling him, like, no, like, I'm not going to send it to you, he kept on asking for pictures and videos of body hair and me flexing and stuff. He proceeded to ask to FaceTime me, which I then said no to, and then I asked why, and this is what he said. It's sad to say that I can't even look up my biggest influence the same again. I've heard multiple stories about him doing this to people, but you never believe it until it happens to you. So now, I'm a big believer of what James Charles does to other people, and it sucks because he has so much going for him, and he does this to himself. 
I'll let us from TikTok is to try to boost. Then following on from that, the young guy came out onto his Twitter account and said, I had to screen record it from my notes because it wasn't sending on here. Here's me in real time opening a snap, which says, just watch you show off and look hot as fuck. Ha ha ha. So I am going to show you this very brief clip of the accuser going into his snaps, showing the snap allegedly from James Charles. James Charles then came out on Twitter with a statement. James Charles wrote, trigger warning, grooming and paedophilia. There's a video going around about me on TikTok and Twitter of a guy calling me a groomer and I want to address it right away. The accusation that I have groomed this person is completely false. Last week, I came across someone on my Instagram explore page. Sorry followed me and added him on Snapchat. The next morning, I woke up to several snaps from this person. Being excited, I added him back, saying he loved me and also lewd photos of himself in the shower. I asked how old he was right away and he told me he was 18, so I started flirting back. In the excitement of meeting someone I thought could potentially be great, I didn't ask for a copy of his ID or passport. It's now clear, based on the video he uploaded, that he was taking photos of me with another device and had an ulterior motive from the beginning. Later in the day, he said a few things that made me question the validity of his original age answer. And when I asked him to confirm his age, once again, he admitted he was 16. I told him I was really uncomfortable and apologised for flirting, but he insisted on continuing talking, saying it could be our little secret. He's a fan of mine and he would never tell anyone. I told him I wasn't okay with this. He started getting upset and at this point I unfriended him. We haven't spoken since. I'm not victim blaming or victimising myself either. Simply sharing what happened and what happened was not okay. After false allegations like this in the past, I would never knowingly engage with anyone underage and put my life on the line for a few Snapchats. Because of situations like this, instead of taking someone's word for it, I now will ask to see the ID or passport of every guy I have a conversation with. So while I think it's a good thing that James Charles came out and addressed the situation quite early on, and he did say, oh, I'm going to check guy's ID from now on. Why did he not learn from 2019 when he had that situation with Sam the waiter from Seattle that caused Tati to make the Bi Sister video and then Dramageddon 2 exploded. We all remember what happened there, so I'm not going to get into past allegations. But why has James Charles not learned since then that he has to be very careful about who he's talking to on social media, that he needs to kind of vet these guys that he flirts with before he goes ahead and flirts with them or sends them nudes or gets into it with them? Why is he not vetting them checking their ages before he does all that. That is one thing that's really kind of perplexing to me in this whole situation. Also, the other thing is I really want to mention that there is a massive, massive power imbalance here. If you think of a 16-year-old fan, you know, somebody who might watch James Charles on TikTok, James Charles with all his 25 million whatever YouTube subscribers, all of his money, power, that is quite imposing and quite sort of intimidating to a 16-year-old. It might seem exciting to a 16-year-old as well, but it is a massive power imbalance because what ordinary 16-year-old is on that same level of wealth and, you know, what do you call it, confidence as James Charles. Your average 16-year-old is either going to be really excited and try and get clout from the situation or they're going to be intimidated and they're going to feel like, oh my God, I've got to respond to this person because it's James Charles and he's chosen me to talk to. So if you were a 16-year-old, I should imagine that is really, really kind of scary and off-putting and nerve-wracking. You know, at the end of the day, I'm somebody who's always going to believe victims in the situation until the other person comes out, shares their side and, you know, then whatever, if it goes to court, whatever, whatever from there. But I'm somebody who is always going to believe the victim, especially given that this is now, as I said, the third time within the space of a year that we've heard these same allegations about James Charles. 
It just seems a little bit funny to me. Next thing, James Charles always loved to mention that these guys are queer baiting him because often the guys that he sort of gets talking to are straight guys or they're bi curious. Remember all that with Sam the waiter in Seattle. Then later on, months after that, there was a 14 year old boy who was on TikTok. He actually uploaded a YouTube video with his friend where he came forward about James Charles as well, saying that James had made him feel very uncomfortable, flirting with him, coming on too strong, all this kind of stuff. Same allegations again. So the other thing that I wanted to say was where James Charles tries to say that these guys are queer baiting him as well. Why is it always James Charles going after a guy that is straight or bi curious? Why? Why is James Charles not going on dating apps like Grindr, Tinder, you know, everything else to try and find himself a match that way? Or James Charles has got the money to use a professional dating service. He could even hire an escort or a sex worker if he wanted to, if he's really that thirsty. Why is he using his IG account, which, let's face it, he is a major, major influencer. So his IG account is really work for him. Why is he using that, which is really a work account, to try and hook up with guys? It don't make no sense. If this was a one-time thing, I'd be willing to be like, oh yeah, let's give James Charles the benefit of the doubt on this one. But it isn't a one-time thing. It keeps happening. At this point, this is a pattern of behaviour that we're seeing with James Charles and these young guys. So if it's a pattern, if it keeps repeatedly happening and happening and happening, why has James not learned from the first time? Why has James not learned from 2019? He went through hell. He even came out at one point and said he was suicidal. During his No More Lies video, he said... Him being cancelled and everything had caused him to feel suicidal. So why has James Charles not learned about this behaviour since then? Why have there been three more people come forward making the same allegations? You know, if it was once, you could say, oh, it's a mistake. But four times now we've heard this same thing. Four times is not a mistake. Four times is a pattern of behaviour. Next, I'm going to play you a clip from Keemstar because Keemstar came out and reacted to this whole situation. And honestly, this is a time where I agree with Keemstar. I don't always agree with Keemstar, but in this, I definitely, definitely do. I'm furious about the situation with James Charles. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking done with it, right? Fucking three times a year, we're reporting a story that somebody on TikTok is exposing James Charles for private messages, right? Oh, he was sending sexual stuff to me. And even though I told him I was straight and he kept pursuing me. And then, you know, James Charles will put out a defense. Well, he was queer baiting me. He lied. He said that he was, you know, bi curious or whatever. This has happened so many fucking times. I don't even remember how many times it fucking happened. The point is, is how does James keep getting caught up? We always come to the conclusion that James Charles is the victim and these other people are just out for clout and attention. Okay, okay. But now we got two situations and regardless if they lied about their age or not, James Charles most likely committed a fucking crime. You can't send naked pictures to yourself, to a minor, even if that kid lied about his age. Still a fucking crime. The law doesn't fucking care. And now this has happened twice. In less than a year, both of this has happened. Let me ask yourself a question. We're always coming to the conclusion, poor James, James is the victim. But there are other influences, influencers out there, like uh, let's say Corpse Husband, who have so many underage girl fans that if he were to message them and be like, hey, what's up? How old are you? Of course those girls would lie. So Corpse still continue to talk to him. We know that to be true that the kids lie so they can talk to their fucking hero. But we're not running stories on Corpse Husband. Corpse Husband isn't getting caught. Corpse, Corpse Husband isn't getting exposed because he's not fucking doing that. But you know who keeps putting themselves in this situation? James Charles. After almost getting it canceled, after this story's being huge and everyone covering it, and all the drama channels talk covering it, he still gets by by the, by the skin of his fucking teeth and continues the fucking behavior, all right? I don't think James is a victim anymore. It doesn't matter that kids want clout, that kids lie. 
He's acting fucking stupid. He's acting reckless. He's messaging fans for hookups and he's getting caught up for himself. For real, when I saw that clip of Keemstar, I was like, dude is bang on there. He did not get anything wrong there. Keemstar was speaking facts in that clip, in my opinion. Let me know what you guys think, but honestly, there's so much more to this. Trisha Paytas, Ethan Klein, both came out on Twitter speaking their piece on it. I will pop some of the tweets in here, but also Trisha Paytas has now reacted to it in a video. Girl, it is hotting up. It is developing. I do not know what's going to happen next, but I'm keeping an eye out and I will be making another video on this because, of course, I'm going to come and talk about Trisha Paytas reacting to this whole thing. Whew, girl. Anyway, guys, I'm going to stop this little video right here. So I'm going to say take care, stay safe, stay well. Let me know what you think about the whole James Charles situation. You know, whatever you decide, of course, it's your opinion. You know, I'm not going to tell anyone what to do. But I'm going to sit here and I'm going to say I always believe victims. So for me, given that this has happened so many times with James, I'm like, dude, this is really, really not a good look now. Anyway, guys, I'm going to love you and leave you. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Take care, stay safe, stay well, and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye, guys.